Thank you so much, uh, Joran, for this very nice and kind uh, introduction. And uh, first of all, also a very kind uh, uh, invitation to be with you for the keynoting today. And congratulations to you, Joran, and your team for this wonderful conference lasting over 48 hours. It's just a great event. So greetings, everyone from Sweden. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, as many of us, and not at least UNESCO, which I am based quite a lot of my inspiration from for this uh, keynote, is about that there's a ne need for a new social contract for learning throughout the lifespan. So I have entitled my presentation on the, this team. So my session will take the stance of the global initiatives of the futures of education in the context of equity, so social justice, and human rights, and focus on how education and learning need to be forward-looking and different, and different to achieve well-being and an empathy for individuals and society, and to build on an ecosystem and with resilience and sustainability for a new social contract for learners across the lifespan. I think that is really important to see where we are going, but of course, looking back, but also to see what do we need to change and what must be changed. As Johan said, I work quite a lot with ICD and I would like to take the opportunity to just briefly say something about ICD, which is the, the largest uh, global network within the area of open, flexible and distance learning. And it was founded already in 1938 in Canada. And it's partly funded by the Norwegian government since 1988 and the secretariat is in Oslo in Norway. Uh, we are formal uh, consultative partnership with UNESCO. We have over 330 uh, plus members and partners with 70 countries, and we have an outreach to learners for 50 million students across the continent. ICD is working a lot with the area of open and flexible and distance education, and not at least OER, which is one of the key um, features and main activities within our new strategy from this year and the three years ahead. Uh, we're working with uh, two special uh, projects, which I will briefly mention during this session, but uh, ICD already launched an ICD OER advocacy committee in 2017, and I um, have been leading that committee since then. And we are ambassadors from all over the regions. We are 12 in total doing advocacy around open education and OER. So we have to build forward differently for the new social contract, which is very much based on well-being and empathy. And due to the pandemic, all over the globe, we have learned a lot of very, very uh, sad lessons. And that is one reason why we need to take a totally new uh, stance where we are going for health and well-being and uh, equity uh, education with quality for all. And the decisions made today will have a long-term consequences for the futures of education. And as you see, futures is in plural, and I will continue to say, we'll say it in plural because there are many futures. There's not just one size fits all. And decisions made today must be based on humanist humanistic visions of education, development, resilience, and human rights. We all uh, remember this map back in 2020, and that is more or less still how it looks like. I think it is important to have this map in front of your eyes because then you really understand why we need to do something different with the educational system. And more or less one of the only answers on that is about the shared educational system towards uh, open education. But that is not just to move openness into the old system. It is about to really transform the educational landscape. <clears throat> Already back in 2016, UNESCO um, launched the SDGs. And we know that one of them is especially about uh, education. And that was the reason because um, there was a reason for that. And that was because it has an impact at all of the other uh, SDGs. So that is also so important why we need to change the educational systems. And also in 2019, UNESCO launched the Futures of Education, Learning to Become, 
because all the global challenges which we are facing about digitalization, equity, inclusion, climate change and sustainability. And the Futures of Education initiative, which I will um, talk a bit more about uh, during this session, because they have just launched their, their report. And that is about to take another perspective to see what is really uh, needed out there for the people, for the learners, to take the people's perspective and not the offerings from the universities. So that's why they, they call this initiative about learning to become, to become what you, you and me, and everyone else would like to become uh, due to our potentials, our uh, achievements, our desires. So that is what the educational uh, landscape and system have to uh, adapt to, to reimagine how knowledge and learning can shape the futures of humanity and the planet. <clears throat> Uh, going further on, I will just briefly say something about, of course, about uh, the OER recommendation, because that is uh, one of the theme for this um, event. And it was a milestone stone, uh, back in 2019, when the recommendation was launched in November, 20, in November 2019. But already, we had this um, human, uh, UN commitments already back in 1948 about human rights and access to open education, access to education for everyone and free exchange of ideas and knowledge. And of course the recommendation, as we all know, are based on this uh, UN commitments. <clears throat> We're used to talk now since 2019 about the five areas about the, the recommendation. And I will not stay long for that because uh, most of you who are here uh, know very well about it. But I think uh, we just stress that it is so important to really take the whole concept of the recommendation and to see the ecosystem of all those five areas and not at least, not at least about monitoring <coughs> and evaluation, which is a very much important part of the recommendation. So it's not, not just to do things, it's also to monitor and evaluate and to make evidence why it is important. And they have um, described it in uh, such different ways, like uh, about research, about the making processes, about strategies for monitoring, etc. <clears throat> we also know all that uh, OER are based on those five R, but I would like to take the opportunities to add and to, to talk more about uh, the maybe two new R's, and that is about recognition. Both to be recognized, of course, if you are creating OERs producing it, but also if you the use of it, but also if you use it and how you use it, that is also needed for recognition and also the, the issue of recontextualizing to adapt it to your own country, to your own culture, to your own language. And I will give an example of that later on. So those are the maybe two new R's. There may, might be several others as well. The Dynamic OER Coalition by UNESCO launched uh, <clears throat> last year in 2020 to help and support member institutions for implementation of the, of the, the recommendation. If you don't already do it, please um, subscribe to the newsletter and please be, be involved in the community. So openness, why it is so important? It is important because it makes a difference for people about equity and human rights. And it's also a way of being and relating. And it's not just, as I said already before, not just to bring the openness in the already closed uh, educational system. It is to change the system towards openness in all means in an ecosystem for the people. <clears throat> um, Saying that shortly about the OER recommendation, I will take the opportunity also to say something about the recently launched um, UNESCO recommendation on, on open science. We know that the, uh, the OER recommendation was the first one in the educational uh, area. And now this one is the second one, just uh, some years afterwards. And it goes very, very uh, much uh, along together and are important. I know that some of the sessions already for this uh, event have touched about uh, open science recommendation. 
And there are four cornerstones uh, about open dialogue with uh, other knowledge system, open scientific knowledge, open science infrastructures, and open engagement of social actors. <clears throat> so by that background, I will now uh, continue to talk more about uh, UNESCO Global Consultation about the Futures of Education. They started in 2019 with a global consultation with different kind of um, aims and different kind of approaches. They had focus groups. You could uh, organize focus groups. You could uh, answer surveys. You could uh, do some kind of art. You could write a blog post or whatever. And here you see the numbers who were involved in the global consultation. And that was a totally new uh, approach to really learn from the people out there, not just to write a recommendation uh, about something from above, from, but from UNESCO office. But this is made by people all around the globe. <clears throat> it was launched uh, in the beginning of, of um, November, uh, their report. And they had um, consulted people, they had consulted references, they had consulted uh, books, uh, journals, um, people, interviews, as I said, uh, all over the globe. And in, in, I think it was in 20 different kind, kind of languages. So the report is about reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education. <clears throat> so uh, there were nine ingredients identified. Should education be public or private? And who pays for education in the future? about singular or diverse curricula, which perspectives should be included in the curricula. And their arguments are that all the STDs, all the seventh of them, should be included in the curricula in all kinds of subjects. Early learning or lifelong learning, we often talk about lifelong learning as something after a degree, a master degree or a PhD. But lifelong learning starts already in childhood. Personalized learning or collective endeavors, endeavors, sorry, should learning be tailored to needs, the, to needs for the individuals or for the groups. Transformation or incremental change. Is transformation, transformational change needed in education? And what kind of change? And what kind of change will have an impact? And further on, should there be similar or diverse education? Should education be more or less similar across countries or are there cultural contextualized uh, uh, dimensions? And how should that, they be addressed? Should it be top-down or bottom-up change? All the uh, material they reviewed, um, there were of course some optimistic perspectives, but also some very pessimistic uh, aspects about the futures. And they have addressed both of them. And what are the probable or preferred futures? Either which we, we will get or the future we can, we can create ourselves and the future we want. Uh, the report are in two parts uh, and those are the chapters. So as you can see, they have covered uh, quite many new uh, dimensions and perspectives. Uh, I will not uh, read it uh, throughout because I think you can see, get an overview yourself, what it's in about. But it is very much uh, about new perspectives, how we look and reimagine uh, education and what are the catalysts for change. And maybe I will just stop about uh, the, the last one about education across different times and spaces. That is some, maybe something very new for us uh, due to the pandemic that education take place more or less as this camp uh, as well do, uh, all over uh, the day and night, so all over the time zones. So 24 hours a day. <clears throat> so um, given this very brief uh, introduction about and the need for a new social contract and what that can um, encompass, and what can be embedded in that, I will give some examples of the work by ICD in the field of OER. And those are the two projects about the Francophone OER project and about the Encore project. 
So the Francophone project is a project with um, the, those current members. It is by UNESCO, it is by the French Digital University's uh, Numerique, the French Ministry of Higher Education, uh, Virtual University of Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast, and the uh, Republic of Congo. Uh, French National Commission for UNESCO and UNESCO as such, and the ICD. So why are we doing this? Because uh, we all know that language is so much more than the, the, the letters and the words and whatever it is. You need to learn things in your own native language because it is the way you are and the way you can understand why things are important. <clears throat> There might be other futures partners, but what we are doing is that um, we are using the, the LIDA course by our OER University about, um, about uh, how to uh, learn about OER and Creative Commons. And that is, has been translated uh, into French. Um, of course, translated as we used it to talk about translations, but also it has been contextualized to the French context and to the African context. And there are four uh, major cornerstones in this uh, initiative. It is about capacity building. It is about multi-sectoral dialogue. It is about catalyzing na uh, nature, about cultural approach and replicability. I heard this morning, uh, the keynote was, uh, uh, actually talking about uh, this initiative as well in his speech. And um, as you can see here also on the slide, um, we are mainly uh, targeting the uh, area one and number two in the OER recommendation. So of course the whole initiative is based on the OER recommendation and mainly those two areas. So as I said, uh, the course was uh, translated into French and uh, contextualized in the French uh, context. And that was really a success. And it's really why I mentioned this uh, initiative is because it is uh, a way you can work forward on uh, for other kind of languages, for other kind of the parts of the work. Uh, the other project I will briefly mention is about the ENCORE Plus project. It's a European network for catalyzing open resources in education. Although it is a European project, it is um, uh, also a global project uh, because it is, uh, can be uh, uh, disseminated and um, transforming to other, other parts of the, the world as well. And we also already have um, uh, members from other parts of the world in, within the project. So the Encore Plus um, is a knowledge alliance uh, uh, project funded by the European Commission uh, for three years. And it is uh, about supporting, and the, supporting the uptake of open education resources. It is about catalyzing and sharing innovative practice across education and businesses. It is about developing stakeholder communities for knowledge exchange. And you can here in the bottom see all the partners. So there are nine partners in the project and the ICD is the coordinate, coordinator of it. Uh, the method uh, is about um, community building and about knowledge exchange throughout uh, uh, thematic circles, communities. And I will explain what the circles are about. So it is about cross-cutting integration events and to demonstrate OER technology and catalyze innovation. And the approach is about, uh, it is acting as a hub for innovation to stimulating businesses, uh, entrepreneurship and innovation, and give examples for best practice and innovation. And uh, what is unique for this uh, Encore Plus is that it is um, combining both academia and business and entrepreneurship and the labor market with the area of OER. And one of the results are about uh, to build the ecosystem Uh, within the area to, which supports uh, innovation in education and training with, with and to OER. And when we talk about OER, we are talking about, about all the five areas in the recommendation, including monitoring and evaluation. 
So uh, the Angkor is built on um, four uh, circles. And the four circles is about policies and practice. It is about quality. It is about OER technology. It is about innovation and business models. And in the outer circle, you can see a reasons why we have this project and what this project would like to achieve. There is a lack of European OER quality paradigm. There is a lack of interoperability among OER repositories. <clears throat> Fragmented, there are fragmentation of the OER communities. There are lack of innovative approaches based on OER and low development of OER institution strategies. So those are some of the issues uh, we are trying to solve within, within those four circles. So here you see the four circles again, and already by now you can be involved if you like. Um, we have developed uh, LinkedIn groups for each of the circles, and we are also organizing um, seminars, webinars uh, within the teams of all the circles. And here you can also see more, more briefly what the circles are about. You can stay connected uh, within the projects, uh, the Francophone project and the Anchor project. Uh, you can subscribe for newsletter, but you can also stay tuned with us in, with ICD. We are publishing quite a lot in the area about open education and OER as that's one of the core uh, missions and uh, activities uh, for the next coming years. So by that, I would like to uh, thank you so much for, for listening and I would be very, very happy to discuss further on with you.